Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. Good morning Jim. Praise God. Bless the Lord, who, and we don't forget his benefits, who forgives all our sins and heals all our diseases. Amen. 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 We serve a good God, and uh, today's a great day, and we are children of the Most High God. Amen. Father God, I thank you for each person here today. Thank you for ministering and moving in a mighty way in their lives. I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. I thank you for uh, your move and working your, working in our lives that the battles we face are not ours, but they belong to you, God. You're fighting mightily on our behalf. I thank you for ministering again and moving on each person's heart today that they will not leave here the same, but they leave here changed, knowing that you are an awesome God. Thank you for this, Father. In Jesus' name, and everyone Amen. said, Amen. Amen. Well, there is power. to his purpose, his will, his plan that's laid out in his Bible, and it's all sealed by the blood of Jesus, and there is power, power. dead you're alive and that resurrection power that raised you from the dead and, and then that spirit life that's on the inside permeates our physical body and we can be well we can he be healed and we can but it takes time to walk it out so don't give up on your miracle keep standing amen amen because amen. Amen, we serve an awesome god
presence of your Holy Spirit, and we declare how great is my God. Sing with me, how great is my God. All will see how great, how great is my God. I'm not thinking about my troubles, I'm thinking about how great.
serving the Lord, our Redeemer? Yes. The one that sets us free? Amen. Amen. We are free. He who is free is free indeed in Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm again, I'm going to say that again. If you feel pain in your body, things, you're up and then maybe down, up, and then you get, I don't know, discouraged, depressed, not feeling good, just with the high praises of God in your mouth and a two-edged sword in your hand, take what God has already given you. Amen? Amen. And declare that He is the Lord that heals us. Amen. He bore the he bore the um he bore the pain. He took our pain, he took our sorrows, he took took our sicknesses, so we don't have to. And by faith we can reach out and receive and walk it daily. Amen? Amen. Again, sometimes it doesn't happen instantaneously or we don't see the results. But if we walk it out and continue to walk, keep planting those seeds. We know when we plant a seed, we water it. The Word of God, of course. (laughs) It grows and grows and it it nourishes and heals whatever it comes in contact with. Amen? Amen? Amen. Praise God. Good morning, everybody. Um, we did a study of Psalm 50 this morning in Sunday school, and um, one thing we learned from uh, the final verses in that psalm is that we glorify God when we bring to Him uh, our, our times of troubles. That's actually a way of glorifying God, and that also um, when we give are thankful to God for what He has done for us. And so with that in mind, we'll ask this morning what um, praise reports you have or prayer requests that you have, and we'll glorify the Lord by bringing those to his knowledge, to his presence. It's not like he doesn't know, but he invites us uh, to to be in a relationship with him in this way. So what do you got? I'll start. I met uh, two awesome ladies this morning, Cassandra and McKenna. And then it was also nice I didn't have to introduce them to everybody because some of you know them. I just thought it was the neatest thing. So they moved to Missouri and had no idea that Ted and Barbara were moving to Missouri. And I told her the story of how I moved here to California from Grand Junction and met these two sisters from Grand Junction. <laughs> and it really is just a small world after all. So anyway, it's really nice to have you here and to have met you. Amen. And what else do we have this morning? Cindy? I had the wonderful pleasure of sitting at the fair on Friday and <laughs> watching my granddaughter do the Jim Canney events. Nice. Uh, it was, and it's so much fun to watch those little kids. Mm-hmm. And she did it again. She's got another belt buckle to add to her. She won the all around. Wow. wow. I did too. Yeah. 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 And then I, Oh, go, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go, finish it, honey. Well, I'm finished with that. I was going to tell you about another grandchild. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have 26. Do you have time? No. Yeah. <laughs> no, not. we don't. <laughs> well, you better start now. <laughs> yeah. Well, my, I have a grandson that he's small for his age, and everybody always thinks he's younger than he is. But anyway, he's been playing golf, and he's been taking lessons for, you know, like five years, four years, whatever it is. Well, my son, he went to a tournament two weeks ago <coughs> and in Napomo, and um, he played anyway. And so I was watching it on TV because he put his phone, you know, up on the, I just, I saw him hit the ball the very first time. I was shocked. I'm not kidding. He's about this big around, but he's only about this tall. And his form was perfect. I was I was really shocked when I saw him, and because I've never seen him play, he hit the ball 83 yards. Wow! He hit it onto the green. This is a smaller course, you know, and uh, he hit it. What was it? 30 feet from the pin, and so he had a putt of that. He put it right in. Two <laughs> shots, and he, I just fell over. <laughs> And I just, I mean, he he doesn't do that all the time, but a lot of the time he he does really well. I'm shocked. <laughs> None of my kids ever, well, 
when they got older, when John, they were with John Deere, they played golf. But it's just well, it's shocking to me to see this little guy hit it that far. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. That is he enjoys it too. It's, it's Clint's <laughs> writer. Right. Nice. Wow. I think it's great. I never played golf, so I don't know it's anything fun. about it. But I wanted to praise God. Uh, Stephen, we've been praying for, he did much, much better this week. And they had rains back there almost every day. The humidity is bad, Neil. but that, uh, Neil, yeah, I call him Steve all the time. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm thinking of us. Wait, why no, Go ahead. <laughs> what, what is she doing with Steve, huh? Steve, yeah, okay. Yeah, no, Neil, that's but great. He's doing and he's, better. He's doing better. He still needs prayer. Sure. And I, I'm hoping he got up and got to church this morning. They have three services now. It's just growing, that church. And it's an assembly. And I, I praise God for for that, and I want him to continue oh, to yeah. touch his body and, and help him get ahead. Okay, okay. okay. Um, April? <laughs> I got a couple of praises. Uh, Black Friday's mom is doing well. Oh, good. And that, it looks like we'll pray that we still make it to November. Uh, the other thing, uh, church camp went extremely well. The girls, you know, uh, I, I hear they're not well today, but uh, they played hard for <laughs> three days. They made a lot of new friends. Shana is exhausted. She's not here because of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the other is I went to a concert this week. Uh, most people don't know who Jolly Roll is or his type of music or like him, but he is a Christian. And his songs tell the story of his uh, rescue, of his acceptance of God and, and our Lord. And a lot of his songs speak of his trials, of where he was came from, and of where he is now. And that uh, his concert was sold out. I've never seen the fairgrounds packed. I've never seen that many people in my life. <laughs> And I never saw so many hands in the air in his songs. Yeah. Wow. Just praising. That's wonderful. And I'm so thankful. You can feel the movement. Like I said, his music is not to everybody's liking. And he doesn't, you know, his words can be kind of colorful. But he has reached, uh, is reaching a lot of people that are were where he is and are bringing a lot to the Lord. But it was a fantastic concert. And mm -hmm. I was just amazed at how many, you know, I go to, I've been to large churches and, you know, we raise our hands and stuff. I ain't been to no church that had this many hands raised to the Lord. Oh, I, I'm so happy to hear. I've seen his picture, you know, in the book. Yeah. I thought, what kind of geek is that? <laughs> I, and I've heard somebody else say, I, that's for judging. God condemned me for that. I judged before I knew. <laughs> and I'm so happy to know that uh, he is a Christian. And I, I hope that he, he continues to be. And if he's doing God's work, praise God. Absolutely. Peggy. Thank the Lord for this cooler weather now, did you? Amen. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. 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 yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So hot. I want you to pray for my kids in Montana. They're going to, uh, to help out with their new granddaughter and um, for them to have a safe trip there and back. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I want God to Bless all of my children, grandchildren, mm -hmm. and great grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Okay. And, um, Pam, I just want to pray for all the firefighters. Oh, we have so many yes. fires going on right now, mm -hmm. and all the people that are having to evacuate. Right. Yeah, that's tough. Mm -hmm. Nicole? Yeah, I have a praise and a, a prayer request. I wanted to praise um, our little children here in church. I had the pleasure of spending Thursday with Heather, and it was so much fun. We mm -hmm. took her to the beach, Eden and I, and she was just such a ray of sunshine, and she was praising the Lord. <laughs> she was like, look at all the beautiful things that God made for us. And wow. Yeah, she's she's every a Every which child. way she was talking about how God was wonderful. She and it was just she's such a refreshing trip. 
to you that you care about every aspect of our lives and we're grateful that you care about the motives of our heart and the things that we pray for that there's nothing too big or too small and we have so many praises today Lord for friends for family um, for children grandchildren great-grandchildren that have um, brought love and joy into our life and this story of, of Heather and and it reminds us of Jesus telling us how a child shall lead them when he sees these young people um, having these accomplishments and praising God in their everyday life. And we thank you, Father, for the church camp um, that that helped to further instill these things. And these children, I hope every child that went to that camp, Lord, um, benefits from that in a way that pleases you and brings uh, honor to, to you through their, their family interactions. And we praise God, Lord, for... Um, people like uh, Jelly Roll that April talked about that can reach people for you, Lord, that other people might not be able to reach. I hope that him speaking of his faith that um, touched a lot of people in our community that heard him, touched everybody, and that he will continue being able to speak about how he came to faith and that that will bring many people into the kingdom. We thank you and praise you, Lord, very much for the cooler weather. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And, and we appreciate when you, you bless us with things like this, the beauty of the earth and the weather. Um, we thank you, Father, for um, all the kids, and in, in, not only in the church, but we ask, thank you for them, and ask you to continue to bless them, all of our children here and, res and our respective children and grandchildren, those who go to this church and all of them out in the world. and. Anne's kids in, in Montana with their particular uh, needs and their needs for travel mercies. And we ask for travel mercies when uh, Cassandra and McKenna return home. Yes. And we, we bless you, Lord, for blessing us with their visit today. And um, we'll close, Lord, with asking a special provision for the firefighters mm -hmm. and um, people whose homes and livelihoods are threatened. And please protect these people, Lord God, and give them miracles and help them see that those miracles are from you and whatever experiences they have in these situations, Lord, help them to see you in these experiences and, and that um, that all of us would bring honor and glory to your name through our thanksgiving and through presenting you with, uh, with all of our requests, Lord, in times of trouble as well. We thank you, Lord, for inviting us to do this and loving us as your children in this way. And we pray these things, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, another thing that we talked about this morning in, um, with Psalm 50 is God is telling his people that he appreciates, you know, he's not going to rebuke them for all these many sacrifices they have been bringing as instructed. He won't reprove them for it. But he reminds them, I don't need it. He says, the cattle on a thousand hills are mine. And so we are going to collect an offering this morning. And we um, should bear in mind that um, God is not up there waiting to pay the light bill in heaven based on what we offer in church this morning. But um, he doesn't need this from us. But again, it's his way of inviting us to participate with him in his kingdom. Um, when um, we offer back a, a portion to him of what already belongs to him, Right. then um, that's an honor and a privilege and it should be should be done in that spirit because God knows the intents of your heart and <coughs> it doesn't the amount really is not genuine it, it is is not important I mean, we think of the widow who gave a mite which um, you know that didn't keep the lights on in the tabernacle or buy oil for the can you know for the candelabra but um, it was more valuable and more important and more honored by God than the people who threw in a lot of money. And you know, they used to have these little trumpet things where they put, put the money in so that the people who put a lot in, their money would make a great noise and everybody would know, oh, look how much I have given and how <coughs> blessed, you know, you get the idea. So anyway, in, in New Testament times, we're taught um, that you, you give 
out of the goodness of your heart, what you can give joyfully, that's what you give. And God assures us that we can't not give him. Amen. So with that in mind, we'll collect our offering this morning. I should have been doing all that talking while I was doing my walking, and <laughs> you could already be singing hymns again. <clears throat> Praise, Praise God, God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. God. God is good. Amen. Amen. We talk about love. We talked about faith. We constantly focus on that. Because <clears throat> if you got the main parts of it, then all the other things will follow after. Love, faith, action. Everybody say love, love, love faith, 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 action. action. And it's all connected into Jesus. It's all connected into his substitution. It's all connected to Jesus taking back what the enemy stole through Adam and Eve. That's the gospel. And the gospel is the power. And if you have that, you have the and you've accepted what Jesus did for you. You have the love of God shed abroad in your heart. <coughs> and as you walk in that love, you walk in the Spirit. And as you have faith in His divine, holy, written Word, you can move mountains, but you also please God. So you're walking in the Spirit, you're moving mountains, and you're pleasing God. And that all requires action. And it's all connected to Jesus. So my advice to you today in your Christian walk, keep it simple. Amen. Don't get caught up in all the new fads because they're not new anyway. It's something probably happened 30 years ago. The, the, these different little movements, which are good. It brings people to Jesus. It brings, it does some good, but we don't want, we don't want stuff that's filtered down, recycled. We want the genuine pure, unadulterated Word of God. Amen. Amen. And we want to have a, 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 a revelation of who He is and what He has done. Therefore, don't, according to uh, Romans chapter 12, don't be conformed to this world or religious ways of thinking, but be transformed you're not transformed by somebody else's opinion of what the word says. Mm -hmm. Commentaries are good, uh, but you have to, commentaries or you hear different teachings, but sometimes ministries are based on the teachings of people who've had a revelation of God and it's kind of regurgitated. It's kind of recycled. And then it just get, kind of gets watered down and we're all we're saying, do you remember what happened in 1822? This guy, miracles, which, Awesome. I love to read the stories. When I first came to the Lord, I read these stories. I read these people. Nowadays, they say they're, they're um, this happened or maybe they're heretics or something. But things just get all messed up. Down and 
with time, people's opinions and how people, some of the greatest men of God like in the 1850s, 1900s, 1950s, and then uh, things come up to try to nullify what they did, but we don't base our theology on what somebody did 100 years ago. We based our theology and our religion on what somebody did 2,000 years Amen. ago. Yeah. Amen? Yes. We have a fresh revelation of what he did. So when we realize that the, the law of the spirit of life in Christ, because of what he did 2,000 years ago, sets us free from the dominion of darkness and of sin that's prominent, prominent in the world. Amen? Amen? There is a law of the spirit of faith and love and compassion because of Jesus which gives us right standing with God. And there's also the, the law of sin and death, which came about when uh, Adam sold out to the devil and the curse came upon us. But through man, one man's <clears throat> sin came death. Through one man's obedience came truth and life yeah. and victory and health and restoration. He's restored to us. He's restored to us what the devil stole from us several thousand years ago and we have to have a fresh revelation of that of what Jesus did and walk in love walk in faith and put action with that faith and it's all connected with Jesus and we need to understand that and not be conformed to the worldly way of thinking or the churchy way of thinking we need to be uh, <coughs> conformed to the word way of thinking. Amen. Amen. It's okay to be a, a word person and meditate on the word. Because if you meditate on the word all the time, the Bible says you're going to be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. And you'll be bear fruit in your season. Amen. Amen. When other people are struggling, you'll be the one that's helping them through whatever they're going through. Because your, your feet are set on a solid foundation and that is Jesus Christ amen the king of kings and the lord of lords so today i encourage you i urge you just like it says in romans chapter 12 verse 1 my brothers and sisters by the mercies of god to present your bodies dedicating all yourselves set apart as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to God, which is your rational, logical, intelligent act of worship. Do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed. This is the Amplified Version, as you mature spiritually. How, and then it says how, how you mature spiritually. It's by renewing your mind, focusing on godly values, and ethical attitudes so that you may prove yourselves what the will of God is and that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by focusing your thoughts and intentions on the word of God. Amen. When you mix faith with the word, the word can't, the Bible can be on the bookshelf for 50 years and not do anything for anybody mm -hmm. or you can mix faith with it and you can move mountains amen amen and it can transform you you cannot change in your own strength it's only you can only do all things through christ mm -hmm. who strengthens you mm -hmm. that power within you the same spirit that raised christ from the dead that dwells within you is on, the only person who can change you and transform you and what is the catalyst for that? That is by focusing your thoughts and your intentions on the Word of God. The Bible says to give things, to pr give your prayer to God, but then the focus on those things which are good, pure, lovely, and of good rapport, and the God of peace will be with you because you're meditating on the Word. You're like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You can't be moved. It's all because you're focusing your attention on something that's greater than yourself. You're focusing on someone who's greater than whatever the political system or whatever the issues in the world are, are going on. You're focusing on something greater. And as you have that, atten that focus, you change the lives of others and it transforms you. 
You make your life better and you make other people's lives better, no matter what's going on in the world, the county, or Amen. Amen. You are you you we offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, not under our own strength, but by his strength. We keep it simple. We keep it focused on Jesus. Galatians 2.20 Galatians 2.20 says Galatians 2.20 says I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. I am crucified. There you have the word I. I am crucified with Christ. I live, but I don't live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not fr frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. When Christ died, you have to visualize it and picture it. When Christ died, you died. Mm -hmm. When he rose, you rose with him. That's why the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, 2, 6, even when we were spiritually dead, separated from him, Ephesians 2, 6, or 2, 5, when we were spiritually dead and separated from him because of our sins, he made us spiritually alive together with Christ for his grace, his undeserved favor and mercy. You have been saved from God's judgment. And he raised us up together with him when we believe. When you believe, the moment you believe, accepted Jesus in your heart, the, what he did, he did it not for only himself, he did it for you. So when you believe that, you receive that, it's, it says here in verse 6, he raised us up together with him. So when he arose, you rose. When he died, you died. When he arose, you did. And you're spiritually seated in heavenly places with him at this very moment. Amen. He's seated. The Bible says he's seated at the right hand of the Father. You're right there with him. How can I be there? I'm talking about spiritually, your spiritual authority in this life. Amen? Amen. You are not a worm in the dust who has no power, who has no pull, who has no uh, who has no ability to affect change around you. You are spiritually seated with Christ. You have the life of God in you. When he died, you died. When he arose, you arose with him. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives and abide in, abides in you. I don't feel it sometimes. I feel sometimes I feel like I'm I'm talking third person here. Well, maybe I do feel backslidden, sometimes, <laughs> but I'm not backslidden. You just feel so human. You just feel you don't feel spiritual. But that does not change what the Word of God says about you, and that's why you, we have to fight the good fight of faith. And sometimes it's a struggle to focus in on the things we know we need to focus in on. Amen. Realizing who we are in Christ and walking in it. And sometimes we don't feel like it. We don't think like it. That's why we have to make steps of faith. And when we make steps of faith, we please him because the work is already done. Amen? Amen. So we keep it simple. Walk in love walk in faith, put action to both of those, and you will be transformed in your life. Sometimes we're so focused on the details, we just for, we forget the, 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 the meat of the gospel. All that other stuff, change, you want to you change things in your life, you want things to change, focus on those three things. Love, faith, action, connected into Jesus understanding that you are seated in heavenly places with him 
When he died, you died. When he arose, you arose to newness of life. Ephesians 2, 5, and 6. I'm going to read them again. When you were spiritually dead, separated from him because of our sins, he made us, he made us spiritually alive together with Christ. For by his grace, he is under his undeserved favor and mercy. You have been saved from God's judgment. You are saved with God's judgment, and you are not under the you're not under the uh, judgment of, that's coming upon the world. But everyone in the world has been provided a way out. God wishes everyone to be dis be saved. But we have the privilege of knowing the truth, and the truth has set us free. We are not spiritually dead. We are spiritually alive, and we're seated in heavenly places with Christ. Amen? Amen. You're, you're, everyone here is somebody going somewhere to do something. And that, that something is great and mighty things for God. Amen? Amen. You are fearfully, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. In Galatians, uh, when I was reading Galatians 2.20, where it said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live, now that you know the truth, you know that you're not dead, you're alive. Now you live your life, not living the life of the old you, but the new you that's in you. And you got to let it loose and let it go and let it flow and walk with Jesus. Amen? Amen. You, uh, Clay, I am crucified with Christ. I am crucified with Christ. That is, in him I have shared his crucifixion. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in this body, I live by faith. It's a process. It's a daily walk. By adhering to, relying on, and completely trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not ignore or nullify the gracious gift of the grace of God, his amazing, unmerited favor. For if righteousness comes through observing the law, then Christ died needlessly. His suffering and death would have no purpose whatsoever. Paul instructs people to change how they think about themselves as self-reliant, self-serving, or independent. But instead, you, you've got to see yourself dead to sin, alive to God, in Christ. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Yes. You have to see it. You have to visualize it. Some of these things in the world, meditation, visualization. You have videos saying, oh, that's bad, that's bad. No, it's only bad if it's used in a, a, a wrong context. But the Christians need to meditate on Jesus. Think about, focus in on when all hell's breaking loose in your life. When things are uh, taking a turn for the worse, you, you focus your thoughts on Jesus. Don't get angry. Don't get bitter. Don't get. If you have this, sh shake it off and walk by faith and trust Him. Give it all to Him and, and uh, allow Him to transform you and grow you through this, whatever trial you're going through. He didn't send it on you, He didn't put it, put it on you. But he's going to get the glory as he when he sets you free from it. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Visualize it. Take hold on. See yourself. See yourself as Christ sees you. What did I do this morning? I just presented some scriptures that declare who you are and what he's done. He set you free from sin. Well, I got sin going on. Alone. I just can't shake it loose. You got to visualize it. You got to meditate on it. You got to believe it with your heart and start confessing. I don't know why people have su such a hard time with confessing. They think it's some bad thing. No, you're either going <coughs> to talk your faith or you're going to talk your doubts. And if whatever you talk about the most is what's going to be the biggest thing in your life. Amen? Amen? Believe it. Receive it. Talk about it. Talk about it until you see it. In your life see it by faith does it, everyone here have dreams they dream and they can just see it they
They can just visualize it. Sometimes the things that we want, maybe down the road we see, no, God didn't want me to have that. I would have been in worse shape than if I got it. The point is, I'm trying to get you to visualize what Jesus did for you. Amen? Visualize it. Think about it. Through the hard times, let those things be the things that get you through to the other side. Amen? Amen. Amen. God is God is on the move. Joseph had a dream, and he was people were bowing to him. He was in position of power, but he didn't see it come to fruition for at least 20 years, wasn't it? 17? Long time. Long time, long time. <laughs> it's the same way with us. Sometimes we is it, we get weary and well-doing, but like the Bible says, we if, if we don't, don't go weary and faint and quit what you're doing keep focusing in on the Lord and let it transform your life his word will transform your life you go from glory to glory from glory and then you're in glory right because as the flowers of the field the Bible says the Sun comes up and the flower withereth so is our life we're here today and gone tomorrow and what does he say he said uh, rich people don't think you're so hot because you're not because that's not true riches. The true riches are found in the Lord. So see yourself as Christ sees you. See yourself as God sees you. He sees you alive. He sees you powerful. He sees you someone that has power and authority. And 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 what? Well, I, I don't feel like it. Well, then know what he's given you. He's given you his name. That's above every name. That in my name you'll cast out demons. You'll lay hands on the sick. They'll recover. If you drink any deadly thing, it won't harm you. Because you have that name that's above every name. And it represents what he did 2,000 years ago. Amen? Amen. You are empowered. And you're a powerful Christian. And I got one more scripture. One more. I'm not going to be long-winded. Praise God. Everybody say praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> um, for if we were enemies we were reconciled to God through the death of his son we are reconnected with God we are connected like that wire if it didn't have electricity and all of a sudden it's connected for a long time no electricity but then it's connected to the power we have been reconnected to the ultimate power and that's God Hallelujah. For we were enemies. We were reconciled to God through the death of his son. It is much more certain, having been reconciled, that we will be saved from the consequences of sin by his life. That is, we will be saved because Christ lives today. Not only that, but we also rejoice in God, rejoicing in his love and perfection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received and enjoy our reconcile, reconciliation with God. We can enjoy being reconnected to God. We can visualize what he has done. We are not dead in our sins. We are alive in Christ. Because I'm going to say it one more time. When he died, you died. When he arose into newness of life and is seated at the right hand of the Father spiritually, you are seated with him in heavenly places, far above all things. Amen? Amen. And here in this life, he knew he, he, you would have trouble, but you know what he said? He said, be of good cheer, my children. I have overcome the world for you. If he overcame the world for us, we can overcome in this life also. Amen? Amen? Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Good news. Amen? Amen? Thank you, Father, for all these people here. Thank you for ministering life, health, and wholeness through your word. The Bible says you sent your word and healed them. You sent your word 2,000 years ago, word in the flesh, and that was Jesus. And whosoever shall call upon him, will be saved. I pray whoever's listening to the sound of my voice, if they need you, just reach out to him right now. Accept him into your life. You will never be the same. Thank you for touching and comforting each person here today. I thank you for a hedge of protection around 
each one of us and our loved ones. I thank you for doing great and mighty things. I thank you for he touching each and every uh, physical body here today, that your healing would just continue to spring forth in the lives of these people here through your word. I thank you for the, your en the energizing power of the Holy Spirit that looks about to heal and, and fulfill the promises that are in the word. Thank you for this today, in Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Amen.